I believe God has a special word for your day. Listen to this. Hebrews 11:6. I'm taking this for my day too. It says, surely blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you. It didn't say maybe. It said surely. And so I believe his will is to bless and multiply whatever, finances, favor, power, anointing, <laughs> hunger for God. Hebrews 11, 6. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I won't forget. Hebrews 11, 6. Now, I want you to speak it. I don't want you to just say, yeah, yeah, that's nice. I want you to say, surely blessing he will bless me today. And surely multiplying he will multiply me today. Then I want you to pick up the phone and I want you to just tell them, you know, this is my prayer request. I need to be multiplied in this area. And, you know, put it out there. Tell it like it is. We don't counsel. Don't take a long time. But do it. It's important. And Sarah, oh my goodness, she's teaching on Acts 19. <laughs> Acts 19 is a revolution. I mean, it really is. It's a revolution. And it's the Holy Spirit being poured out, not only on Jews, but people. Gentiles. It is absolutely wonderful, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this. But there's something I especially like in Acts 19. Would you like to know what it is? It's verses 11 and 12. It says they took claws from the body of Paul and put it on the sick and demon-possessed. And they were healed and they were delivered. Wow, there are people that perhaps would never listen to you, but you could pray over a handkerchief or have somebody do it, uh, even a Kleenex, and, you know, put it in their clothing, put it in their pillow, whatever. And folks, that's another way to pass on healing and deliverance. You know, when you look in the Bible, there's so many ways to heal the sick. I mean, God just gives you many, 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 many ways. You can lay on hands. You can use oil, you know, you can send the word. But imagine a cloth. Maybe you have a rebellious child. Put that cloth you're going to pray over, that handkerchief, in their pillow someplace or under their mattress. Watch what God will do. And we're going to join Sarah now with this beautiful te teaching on Acts 19 and the power of God in the most unusual place. What you just saw is an illustration of what they call solo climbing or free climbing. And what this is, is it's a person who climbs, obviously, various types of mountains with no safety gear. No rope, no net, no, I mean, he had a harness on for his, or belt for his, his chalk, and that's it. That's it. And I would say that that's an example of being committed and daring, bold, courageous. Some of you might even say stupid. <laughs> stupid possibly but commitment and faith and really saying yes and stepping up and being all in and we're finishing our series on daring faith and when we think about daring faith a component a very essential ingredient to daring faith is commitment turn to your neighbor and say commitment, commitment. it's a tricky word we tend to hate it because we're like, it makes our skin crawl. But I want to talk to you today about some of the great things God has for us as it relates to commitment and daring faith. If you have your Bibles, flip over to Acts chapter 19. And uh, the notes are on the back of your bulletin for today as well. And I want to talk to you a little bit about Paul. And Paul, in some respects, reminds me of this guy that you just saw doing a free climb, a solo climb. Paul, in his ministry... We read about him and see his progress in his journey. And when he first started into the ministry, after he received Jesus, he did missions trips. And initially, he started off in what we know today as Turkey. And he did basically three significant missions trips. And at the end of his third missions trip, I would suggest that it's like the culmination. It's like his giant climbing experience, conquering, if you will, or, or overcoming, being committed, if you will, capturing and reaching an entire city called Ephesus. 
And Ephesus is an amazing city during Paul's era. Ephesus at the time was the third largest city in all of the Roman Empire. It had up to a quarter of a million people in this city. It was significant in its financial economic positioning because it had the Temple of Artemis, and huge amounts of commerce and religious tourism came for this particular temple. It was also significant for its strategic location. It was located as kind of a crossways between the east uh, on land and the west on, on the ocean, on the Mediterranean. So it was very strategically located. And it was also known to be completely devoted to the uh, worship of Artemis. So when Paul lands in this city, and it's at the end of his third missions trip, he lands in this city, and there had been a couple people that had come through beforehand, but when you read from verses 1 through 10 in Acts chapter 19, you'll see that when he's there, he finds this group of like 12 guys, and he says to them, hey, have you ever heard of Jesus? And yes, we've been baptized into John's baptism. And then he says, have you ever received the Holy Spirit? Ever been baptized in the Holy Spirit? No, we haven't. So he takes these 12 guys, he lays hands on them, and they're dramatically filled with the Holy Spirit. They speak in tongues, huge, huge outpouring of the Holy Spirit on these 12 guys. From that point on, you see that Paul's ministry and work and investment in Ephesus goes through the roof. I mean, he just goes 100% vertical as far as his success, the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the spiritual outpouring. I mean, the place goes absolutely bonkers. In fact, when you read in verses 11 and 12, it says they took claws from Paul's body and they laid, laid it on various people and they were uh, free from demons, they were healed from sicknesses and all kinds of amazing, astounding miracles were going on in Paul's ministry. It was such an amazing investment. So many results happened. Paul stayed there for two years. And some historians say that more than half of the city gave their lives to Christ. That takes your breath away, right? Like completely, your eyes are like, Bing! oh my goodness, that's incredible. But it was all in large part because of Paul's commitment. His commitment saw huge, huge results. But in the middle of all of this success, in the middle of all these amazing signs and wonders, demonstration, the cities pouring out for Jesus, huge, huge things going on, I want you to pay attention to a super important verse. In Acts 19, 21, Paul is in the middle of this massive revival, massive success, and this is what it says. Paul purposed in the Spirit to go to Jerusalem after he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia and saying, after I've been there, I must go to Rome. And I find this very amazing. I find it amazing on a lot of levels. Because when we have, and I want you to fill this blank in, in your notes. It's the first blank in your notes there. Write the word success. When we have massive amounts of success, if we're not careful, sometimes we become more committed to success than Christ. Sometimes we're more committed to our achievements. Sometimes we're more committed to our financial goals. Sometimes we're more committed to various things we want to work through and process. Sometimes we're more committed to getting great results rather than personal obedience. And if we're going to free climb, solo climb, and have the, the purpose in our hearts that God has created us for, family, we have to be more committed to Christ than success. And it doesn't mean that they're mutually exclusive, but I think far too often we decide, we default, we buy into our American culture that says success is everything. Family commitment to Christ is everything, more than anything else. And I believe so many times we buy into Jesus, but neglect to sell out. I'm going to say it again. We buy into Jesus. Ooh, he's going to make everything better. Everything's going to be great. And, and sometimes, if I'm not careful, I preach that too. And I believe that. And I, I'm 100% bought in. Yes, that's true. Jesus makes everything better. But family, there's also a point in time where you sell out to Jesus. All bets are off. I'm all in. 
I'm not going to regulate. I'm not going to kind of dial in my commitment. Maybe a little bit here and there. If the weather's nice, then I'll pop into church. Ooh, Broncos aren't playing. Ooh, perfect timing. I mean, pick whatever you want. There's ice on the road. Ooh, it rained. I better stay home. Come on, family. We buy in, but neglect to sell out. Let's be all in. Let's free climb. Let's go for the jugular. Let's not re regulate and kind of dial in a little bit here and a little bit there. Let's fall in love with Jesus with entire, complete, utter abandon and not based on the consequences or successes that we have, but all in, fully committed. So more committed to Christ than our success. And you look at Paul, and that's exactly what he did had huge amounts of amazing things going on, great success in Ephesus, and right in the middle of all of it, he's like, yeah, but I gotta go to Rome. I gotta go to Jerusalem. I don't know what's over there. I know that all this amazing success is happening, but I'm still committed to Christ no matter what I experience in the success right here. I am more committed to Christ than my personal results. And that's a model for us, a model that we're more committed to Christ. The second thing I'd like for you to consider is the word conflict. That's the next space down in your notes there, conflict. I find this interesting because as Paul is in Ephesus and the city basically gets revolutionized for Jesus so much that their economy even changes. And there's a gentleman there who's responsible to, he, he gets his income, his livelihood, from creating idols to Artemis. And there's a boatload of these guys who are idol, they make idols and produce all these things. So the people who come for tourism to the temple of Artemis, when they want to buy an idol, there's idols readily available. And, and their economy in large part was built around this idolatry worship to Artemis. So when Paul shows up on the scene and he starts promoting Jesus, 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 and everybody starts turning their lives to Christ. There starts to be this mass underswell, a huge outpouring of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And thousands and thousands and thousands of people are giving their life to Jesus. They're walking away from Artemis and they're walking to Jesus. You can imagine what happens to the, the economy as it relates to idol worship for Artemis. Tracking with me? Sarah wrote her latest book, Heavenly Help, from a deep, rich experience in teaching through Jesus' Last Supper sermon, found in John 14, 16, and in her experience growing up during the height of the charismatic movement. Through this, Sarah learned that the Holy Spirit is our helper and gives us supernatural help in every area of our lives. This book is a refreshing modern insight into the Holy Spirit, both for the world in which we live and as an introduction to the timeless third person of the Trinity. This book is grounded Grounded in Jesus' instruction of the helper to his closest followers during the Last Supper. Sarah's experiences, positive and negative, growing up during the charismatic movement, and supporting biblical content from Luke and Paul in the New Testament. For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you Heavenly Help, along with Sarah's two CD teaching, Help Equals Holy Spirit, which encourages us to the possibilities, evidence, and certainties that are the Holy Spirit. This is a life-changing resource. Call or click to get your Heavenly Help today. We are so excited to invite you on our next group trip. Oh my goodness, it's going to be over the top, thoroughly amazing, and we're going to Portugal and Switzerland. This is a trip opportunity of a lifetime, and you don't want to miss it. Mom, tell us some of the things we're doing. Well, we get to have healing meetings in Switzerland. Hey, is that awesome? And there's a lot spiritually going on there, but Portugal is awesome. It's like God is just pouring out His Spirit, and we get to go in and add to that outpouring. You must go with us. Bring friends, bring children, bring grandchildren, and let's see God move in Europe in a special way, in Switzerland and Portugal through you. And you know, you can get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. You might be saying, I can't go, time, money, all this stuff. We want to pray for you that God would help you to go and open up all those doors. Come with us to Switzerland and Portugal today. So their economy starts to tank as it relates to idol worship. So this guy, Demetrius, he's like, we got to stop this. This is ridiculous. All these people are shifting over to Jesus. We have to totally draw the line in the sand and say no more of this foolishness. So he stirs up a whole huge crowd, thousands of people. And you can go to this very day to the city, the ruins of Ephesus, 
and you can see the exact location. There was a huge riot. Joe, you've been there, right? And you read it. You sit on the steps. You can sit on the steps of this amphitheater, and it's a natural, beautiful place. You sit there and you read Acts 19, verses like 21. Make sure I tell you right. Acts 19, verses 29 to 31. And you read it, and they're having this massive riot, huge thousands of people saying, great is Artemis, great is Artemis, and they're all in this amphitheater. And I love what happens in this because it shows commitment. In all of this conflict, Paul says in verse 30, (laughs) he wants to go into the assembly. He wants, he tells all of his brothers and followers of Christ, Drop me into the middle of all of this conflict. Throw me in the frenzy. Throw me in the riot. Many of us are not really eager for mosh pits, right? They're like, what's a mosh pit? Don't worry about it. If you don't know, you don't need to worry about it. (laughs) But so many times, we back away from conflict. And we back away from conflict as it relates to Jesus. We back away. I look at the recent shootings in the Oregon thing, all of that, all of that uh, gunman who said, do you believe in God? Boom. And if we're not careful, when there's conflict, we want to evaporate, we want to disappear, we want to get invisible, we want to kind of sneak away, sneak back behind something. They might, are you a Christian? Well, kind of, I'm kind of cultural. But Paul didn't do that. He was committed. And he jumped in the middle of it. He was more committed to Christ than he was to his success. He was more committed to Christ even through conflict. He didn't back off. He didn't say, I'm quitting, I'm giving up. No way, I'm too scared. He was completely all in. I love the way Sarah teaches on commitment. Oh, the commitment that we can make through the power of the Holy Spirit and what are the results of it? they are out of this world. Now, I'm sure you would love to know more about the Holy Spirit. Who wouldn't? It's important. And I'm so excited about her new book, Heavenly Help, because she really ministers to you how you have a relationship with Him. It's not just who is the Holy Spirit, but how He empowers you on the inside how He directs you, how you can listen to His voice, how always He never leaves you. He's called the helper because I think He helps in so many ways. And I like this because, you know, when you look at the book of Acts, my, it's the acts of the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit you just know about. It's the Holy Spirit who acts, acts inside, acts outside. I tell you, this will be, I I believe, one of the best books you've ever received. So I really encourage you to call in and get five or six copies. Why get just one? Because then you'll read it, mark it up, and you won't give that one away because you marked it up. But get four or five for other people who need the mark of the Holy Spirit inside them. They need to know what His mark is. They know, need to know how the Holy Spirit has marked them for powerful things inside and outside. Oh, you just can't just get one. Call in. And of course, when you call in for your books, notice what I said, plural, books, leave your prayer request. Tell us what you are needing. And we're not going to counsel you. Keep it brief. But we do want to pray the power of the Holy Spirit into your circumstances and into your life. And it's very important. And you know, the Holy Spirit helps knit us and bond us together. I don't know how many times I've been disappointed in people or they've been disappointed in me. And we're still friends today. We still have good relationships because the Holy Spirit is so powerful in relationships. But I want to share a testimony of power for your healing today through the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the book of Acts is the acts of the Holy Spirit. He's acting today for you because I want to share a miracle of healing. Then I want to pray for you and any kind of healing need that you have. 
Some years ago, a man came to our church with his family and he got born again. He'd watched the television and didn't know you could have Jesus in your heart. So he came with his five children and when the altar call was given, all of them, six of them went forward to receive Jesus. And he was totally transformed by this. I mean, it was a big deal, a big change in his life. But he had parents in San Jose, California, who were not born again. And his mother, he dearly loved his mother, had been hurt in a car accident. And some way her breast had been penetrated and there was a constant flowing from that and the doctors couldn't stop it. They tried to stop it, but she had that discharge. So I said, well, I'm going to San Jose. Would it be all right if I went to their house and prayed with them? So he set it up for me. So I went to their house, sweet, sweet Italian people. And so I asked them, have you ever received Jesus into your heart? And they said, well, we know about him, but we don't know if we have him. So both the father and the mother received Jesus. So then I said, now Jesus took your sins, but he also took your sicknesses. So I want to pray over this discharge. So I laid hands on them and on her, and she never had the discharge again. Now, what is this? I can't jump out of the screen and lay hands on you, but I can send the word to you. And you know, it said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from every destruction. It didn't say some of them. It didn't say just discharge, every destruction. So I want to pray for you now. I want to pray for your physical needs. So you say, well, I have eight or 10. Well, put your hand on top of your head. You know, we can pray for all of them or put your hand on that one part of your body where you have a need. And so get ready. Get ready for what? Your healing miracle right now. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I send the word into every person who is expecting healing today in the name of Jesus. And your word heals and delivers every one of them from every destruction. And I thank you that your word cannot return void, that it prospers and accomplishes in that which it's sent to. So right now, the word is in there, healing and delivering. In Jesus' name, amen. Please call us and tell us that you believe you received. Please call us and tell us that you know that Jesus heals today. If I prayed for you, why don't you call me and let me know? That would be a great blessing. And also, you may have loved ones who have healing needs, and you could leave their names when you call in, that would really be good. And we can pray for them too. Because you say, well, can you pray for people that don't know they're about healing? Oh, yes, you can. And if I had time, I could tell you many miracles along that line. But I don't have time. But I want to encourage you again, call in. Get heavenly help. Who doesn't need heavenly help? You mean to tell me you don't need any help from heaven? Who doesn't need the power of the Holy Spirit inside them, living his life through them? How do you know what you have if you, nobody ever tells you? This book will tell you. So when you call in, leave your prayer request, get the book and get the book for other people too so that you can use your book as a missionary. It will work for you. Say with me, today is the best day of my life because Jesus Christ is big in me. Sarah wrote her latest book, Heavenly Help, from a deep, rich experience in teaching through Jesus' Last Supper sermon, found in John 14, 16, and in her experience growing up during the height of the charismatic movement. Through this, Sarah learned that the Holy Spirit is our helper and gives us supernatural help in every area of our lives. This book is a refreshing modern insight into the Holy Spirit, both for the world in which we live and as an introduction to the timeless third person of the Trinity. This book is grounded in Jesus' instruction of the helper to his closest followers during the Last Supper. Sarah's experiences, positive and negative, growing up during the charismatic movement and supporting biblical content from Luke and Paul in the New Testament.
Testament. For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you Heavenly Help, along with Sarah's two-CD teaching, Help Equals Holy Spirit, which encourages us to the possibilities, evidence, and certainties that are the Holy Spirit. This is a life-changing resource. Call or click to get your Heavenly Help today. Phnom Penh, Cambodia, has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Night care, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Night Care from Saving Moses. Thank you so much for watching. And this, these programs, this program today is absolutely a very core essential ingredient for what God has put in my heart, as well as the purpose and my destiny for life and what I do. So I want to encourage you, make sure you hop on the phone, grab your copy of Heavenly Help, get on the website. But I also want to pray with you that the Holy Spirit, you would recognize the Holy Spirit in your daily living. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will be with us all the time. So it's not an issue of if he's here or not, but more so an issue of recognizing. So I'm going to pray for you and myself included that we would recognize the helper with us better with greater sensitivity and cooperation. So let's pray together. Father, I thank you so much for sending the helper to us. We're very, very grateful for your generosity and your gift, this amazing gift you've given us with the helper. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding, help us to be sensitive to you, to recognize your presence, to hear your voice, and to walk in sync with you. I pray for each of us watching today that we would walk in step with you. And I pray Galatians 5.16 that as we walk with you, we won't fulfill the lusts of our flesh. Help us to sense you well, to recognize you, and to call on you and welcome you in our daily living. Thank you so much for loving us and helping us, helping us in all the weaknesses and areas, all of our shortfalls. Thank you for being our helper in Jesus' name. Amen. So awesome. And I love that the helper, God, this Holy Spirit, is present with us, available to us to help us 24-7, just saying, yep, recognizing I need divine heavenly help.